my pleasure to introduce you to Farah Heckman. She just turned 11. And let me tell you, this little girl is very happy to have been able to celebrate her most recent birthday. You see, Farah lives in rural Montana. And in June, a group of 4-Hers and their parents set out from Westby, Montana, heading towards a member's farm. Farah was one of only two girls, so she was asked to ride on the side-by-side -side ATV. Her mother, Melissa, is very protective of her, but followed close behind in a caravan of vehicles headed towards the farm. Just a few, few short minutes later, her mother saw the ATV. It was overturned in a ditch, and her daughter was pinned underneath. Luckily, there were several fathers there who quickly pulled the ATV off of Farah. Farah wasn't moving, and she seemed unresponsive. They were 20 minutes from a highway and 60 minutes from the nearest hospital when this happened. They called 911, but they could not wait. Melissa grabbed Farah and put her in a pickup and started heading towards the ambulance that had been dispatched. On the way to meet the ambulance, Farah's breathing was labored and she gasped for air. She wasn't talking, but would respond by shaking her head yes or no. Melissa sang to her, and once they met the ambulance, they were still another 30-minute drive to Sheridan Memorial Hospital in Plentywood, Montana. The staff at Sheridan were ready to care for Farah. They had initiated a connection with Avera eCare emergency, and Dr. Brian Scow was in Sioux Falls and was on the video monitor with them. Farah's life was hanging in this balance. Dr. Scow was over 600 miles away as he guided the team at her bedside to lead the care, which involved reinflating both of Farah's lungs. You see, many rural hospitals don't have a physician there 24-7, so telemedicine can help to cover that gap until a physician can arrive. Dr. Scow stayed on that monitor for hours, guiding care, arranging transport for Farah, and reassuring the team in Sheridan that they were doing all that they could. Once Farah was stabilized, she was flown to St. Vincent Healthcare in Billings, Montana, where she was hospitalized for two weeks. In addition to her collapsed lungs, she had numerous fractures, including six ribs, her jaw, both shoulder blades, upper right arm, as well as a bone in her spine. I don't think I could have been that tough. Farah is doing great today, and she's home living a normal life. She was even able to come visit us in Sioux Falls and see Avera's eCare because she wants to be a doctor someday, just like her hero and her new friend, with whom she shares a birthday, even as a PR person, I can't make this up, Dr. Scow. She was also our one millionth patient for Avera, our t and eCare is our telemedicine arm. I tell her story because when we say the word telemedicine, people often think only about the technology. But healthcare, first and foremost, is a people business. I can buy technology anywhere. It's the people that make the difference. So what is telemedicine? Telemedicine is remotely diagnosing and treating patients through technology. It's not a new practice, and Avera has been in the business for about 25 years now. And it's now the most robust telemedicine provider in the world. Avera eCare is in over 10% of all critical access hospitals in the U.S. and has saved over $180 million in healthcare costs since we started in the 90s. So how did we get into the telemedicine business? This really comes down to innovation. Our challenges in the healthcare realm are no different than any, anyone else. We have shrinking margins, more governmental regulations than nuclear materials, and no one wants to come see us until they're really, really sick. Healthcare needs to evolve. Focus on well care instead of sick care. Look at bundled care models, care coordination, and navigation for patients. And telemedicine can play a major role in that in a more cost-effective way. This need for change was really what led Avera into telemedicine. We put together a small team of innovators to see what they could come up with, and today we're leading the nation because of our varied portfolio of products. I want to give you a quick example. We have a product called eSenior Care. This population has a unique set of challenges. First, transfers to the emergency room are difficult and expensive, and it's usually an aging population with complicating health factors. Two, you're treating a vulnerable population. And three, they have a whole lot of prescriptions. So instead of just thinking of telemedicine as a physician on a monitor, you need to expand your view and think, what else could we do? Telemedicine can't fix the one fatal flaw we all have. None of us are going to live forever. But with our telemedicine senior care program, we're able to have that conversation with someone sooner. 
You see, oftentimes in these communities, the caretakers have known the residents that are coming into their facilities their whole lives. They are their friends and their neighbors. It's a lot harder to have that difficult end-of-life discussion with Mr. Smith when he was your most respected and beloved teacher in high school. We found that we can be a disruptive external view and ask, have you had that care consult with this person about end-of-life care? We help to facilitate those assessments and help with decisions through telemedicine. In addition, we help our long-term care facilities with all of their admissions and medication reconciliation. Maybe your great aunt is on 25 different medications because she sees 10 different specialists who aren't working together. Through telemedicine, we look at those prescriptions, reduce them if we can, look for proper interactions that are happening, and this has helped to reduce falls and fractures from medication issues like dizziness in these patients, and we've also seen reduced readmission rates to the hospital. One more story about long-term care and I'll move on, but I just wanted to share that often people become very ill in the middle of the night. You may be at a rural nursing home and in the past we would have just transferred that patient out even if it's two o'clock in the morning. Now instead of transferring them, we can do those urgent care visits through telemedicine. We take about 40 calls a day and less than 10% of those patients have to be hospitalized. That's a great peace of mind for those families. So you see, telemedicine can do much more than what you might think of the traditional sense of a physician on a monitor. At Avera, we've always been in the business of going to where we were invited. And it turns out we were invited to a great many places. Avera's in over 100 communities across a five-state region. We have a workforce that has to cover that region, and as you can imagine, it's very difficult to sometimes find a pharmacist in Gregory, South Dakota, or a primary care physician to be one of two physicians taking call every other night in Tyler, Minnesota. So this really goes back to what I said earlier, that it's not about the technology, it's about the people. I could walk it into any Best Buy store and purchase the technology with the exception of the dedicated network line that this runs on, but it's the people that make the difference. We may not realize it, but nationally, physicians suffer burnout at a rate that's higher than any other American worker. Almost half of all physicians have at least one sign of burnout. As healthcare professionals, we can't put people into remote and rural places without resources and expect them to thrive and feel supported. We need to acknowledge the immense work it takes to do rural medicine and support it. Telemedicine is an incredible way that we can do that. One day in a rural hospital, a man was brought in with a terrible wound from a hunting accident. The physician had known this man for over 20 years, and they were good friends. When the patient arrived, the care team hit the e-emergency button on the wall, and within 20 seconds, that rural hospital was seamlessly connected with an emergency-trained trauma physician in Sioux Falls. The two physicians worked together to care for the patient. When that rural physician went home, he said it was the first time in 20 years that he hadn't stayed up all night worrying if he had done enough worrying that he should have done something different for his friend. Telemedicine had given him that peace of mind he had been looking for. It virtually created a team for him to work with, and suddenly, he was no longer alone. That's powerful. It's so powerful, it extends the careers of our physicians in rural areas. New medical students pick sites with telemedicine over non-telemedicine sites for this reason. It's become a recruitment tool. Beyond offering an extension for physicians, telemedicine also offers more access to care. Patients are not needing to travel such long distances to see their physicians. For example, there are not enough psychiatrists to cover the mental health needs in the state, and there never will be. What if we had e-behavioral health to cover those care needs? This is actually something we're working on right now with Indian Health Services. We only have a few neonatal and intensive care specialists across the state. Our NICU physicians can see a premature baby born in Aberdeen who can't be transferred out because of a snowstorm on the video monitor. Thanks to technology, that physician can also listen to that baby's heart and lungs through a special stethoscope with telemedicine, as if that physician was right there in the room. Telemedicine also leads to better care and outcomes. We work with some of the largest systems, such as Dartmouth-Hitchcock. They have partnered with Avera because of our high level of quality, and what that means for patients actually leads to lives saved. We've talked quite a bit about our e-emergency. Let's talk about one of our lesser known areas such as intensive care, EICU as we call it. We offer 24-7 remote monitoring of intensive care patients through telemedicine. 
Trained intensivists are always watching the vital signs, and we use a special algorithm that will tell us when a patient can take a turn for the worst. This helps us to intervene earlier. Each year, our ICU service has saved an estimated 273 lives that would have otherwise been lost, and over $11 million of avoided healthcare costs. Or e-pharmacy, where trained pharmacists are double-checking prescriptions for patients all over the United States 24-7. The average cardiac patient goes home on approximately 13 medications. Imagine balancing all of those medicines, 13 drugs. Our pharmacists check drug interactions on every patient we monitor, and they've checked over 2 million orders and have saved more than $63 million in healthcare costs. So as you're seeing, telemedicine can lead to lower costs to the patients for healthcare and quality care. It's not possible to hire every specialist in every hospital in America, and by 2025, it's actually projected there will be a nationwide shortage of 450,000 physicians and registered nurses. Yet as we know with baby boomers and the aging population and new people having access to insurance through the Accountable Care Act, demand is rising. So with telemedicine, we can bring a virtual hospital to you. It helps we've had very visionary partners. The Leona M. and Harry B. Helmsley Charitable Trust has been a funding partner with Avera eCare. In 2009, they created a rural health care program to improve access to quality of care in the upper Midwest. You see, they believe you shouldn't have to give up quality care just because of your geography. Grant funding from them has helped to further access to telemedicine efforts through Avera eCare. By hospitals applying and receiving grant funding to offset the cost of telemedicine contracts. You may also be wondering, how can we treat people remotely? Don't you have to be licensed after all to practice medicine? Our telemedicine actually has its own credentialing department, and our physicians are privileged and credentialed in every facility and licensed in every state in our network. So that's a common question that we get. Telemedicine is indeed the future. So you may wonder, what's next? The possibilities are really limitless. I firmly believe my generation will get the bulk of our healthcare in the future in the palm of our hand. Already, Avera Now is an app that I can open and for just $49, I can see a physician in just minutes right from my cell phone while sitting on my couch in my sweatpants. That's perfect for busy professionals like me. NATO came to see us last year. That was pretty neat. They spent two days at our Avera eCare facility training and working together. They were working to figure out how telemedicine could help in major disasters. So the next time there's a major tsunami and a hospital needs a neurologist and none can be found, could a telemedicine operator like Avera step in to fill that gap? It's an intriguing thought and one we're continuing to work on. What else is possible? When I'm a senior citizen, I think that I'll get up in the morning, step on my scale, put my finger in a pulse oximeter, have my blood pressure taken and maybe a quick blood test to look at my sugars, all from a remote monitoring system in my house. Then my nurse who monitors my health will pop up on my video monitor, tell me how my health is, and recommend changes for the day. We're not that far from this. And from what I've shared today, the future of healthcare is here. We will always need people to care at the bedside for our patients. Telemedicine will never replace that. But telemedicine can be an extension of that care. It can carry care across the miles to people in need, just like FARA. It can save in healthcare costs by reducing unnecessary transfers and keeping people close to their home while receiving the most appropriate level of care. And it can help to extend our workforce and build a virtual team, which is especially important in rural areas where extra people can be in short supply. There is much to be hopeful for in telemedicine. Thank you.